Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Network Navigator Visual. Now, the Network Navigator Visual is kind of useful whenever you want to be able to see a flow of how something went from one source to a destination. So think about it like this. The example we're going to see in a few moments is actually looking at some of my fake blog data. And I want to see where people went from one page to the next page. So they might have started off in my home page on my blog and went off to a particular blog. Or maybe they went to my About Me page to learn more about myself. So I want to be able to track that information and see the, the, the fluency of how someone goes from one place to another. And I want to be able to track that through a nice interactive visual then that, that we'll find here with the Network Navigator. The Network Navigator also has the ability to actually have a search box where you can search for particular nodes that have that matching text that you type in the search box. So it allows you to kind of search through these different nodes and the relationships that you have in your data. This one is developed by Microsoft, but let's go ahead and take a look at where we can go download it and start to use it and interact with it. All right, so many of our previous videos have talked about going to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery, which we're looking at here. Again, you can get here by going to visuals.powerbi.com. If you remember, in our previous video, we actually talked about a new location for the Power BI Custom Visuals, which is in the Office Store. So you can still use this uh, site for the time being, but just note that it's changing. These visuals are being moved from here to the Office Store. So to get to the Office Store, all you have to do is search for store.office.com in your address bar, and that'll redirect you to the Office Store. And once you get to the Office Store here, you can see on the left-hand side all the products, and Power BI is, clued, is included as one of the Office products here, so we'll select Power BI. And from here, you can see all of the custom visuals that are available, including some of the R visuals as well. You can see those listed here. And uh, you simply can search for all of the apps here. If you see See More Apps, this will give you the full list of all the visuals, including the one that we are looking for, which in this case is the Network Navigator chart right here. So you would select the Network Navigator chart. It is free, of course. You can select Add, and when you click Add, this will allow you to download the visual right here. And you can also download the sample of the file here as well. So there's a sample so you can get a taste of what it looks like. If you don't think you have a data set necessarily right away to work with this, you can download the Microsoft sample here. All right, so this also walks you through how you can actually import it, but we're going to walk through some of these steps together. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and move our way over to Power BI Desktop. All right, so. Inside the Power BI desktop, we're going to start by going to get my data. And again, like I said earlier, the data that we're going to be using is my website data. So data, pretend website data of where people are navigating to from my blog site. So to get to this, we're going to go up to the Get Data section here on the top ribbon. We will select that we want to pull in some data from Excel. So I'll select Excel here. And then the information that we're going to be pulling in here is this one here called Blog Visits Network. Okay. So we'll select Blog Visits Network, hit Open. And then we'll select that we want to bring in the data from the spreadsheet called page visits right here, and then click load. So we don't need to go edit anything here. We're going to go ahead and click load to load this into our data model. All right, so we now have this new data set that's being loaded into our data model. You can see it's loading into our model now. We have a couple things that are interesting in this data set. You can look at this data set by going over to the data view here. You can see where people are coming from is the source, where people are going to is the target. And then we can see the number of people that are making that move underneath the view section here. You can also see the color that you want to make the, each of the indicators or the nodes with the source color or the tar target color column. And there's a lot of other properties that are in this visual, a lot of other fields that you can dynamically adjust this visual. And some of these we'll be able to use, and some of them not, as we go to work through and start to use this visual. Uh, you'll see that there's quite a bit more we could plug into this visual if we had some additional fields. All right, so for this one, though, let's go back over to the report view. And we need to go ahead and import the Power BI custom visual, which you may notice that I don't see the ellipses here. I just need to resize this a little bit so I can see the ellipses here to be able to import our custom visual. So I'm going to select import from file to bring in our custom visual. And we'll select import a custom visual here. And it'll give us a little warning here. We've seen this before, so go ahead and hit import. And we're going to find wherever we downloaded our custom visual. Now, I've already downloaded it and stored it in this location here. So I'll select the Network Navigator visual and hit Open. And that should automatically bring that now into my visualizations pane. And I can select that Network Navigator and resize it if I want so we get a good view of how this visual works. Now, in the field well area, there's quite a few fields that you have available to you. And like I said earlier, we're going to use some of these. And some of these we won't, but we'll get a good explanation of what these are as we go through this example. But what we want to do is start off by selecting and placing in our source information, which is where someone's coming from on my website, 
inside of the source node. So you can click and drag, or you can just click it, and that'll place it into the source node. Now you don't see anything yet, but that's because we just haven't identified what the target node is, and we can identify the target node by selecting the target and dropping that underneath the target node. Okay, so you can kind of see where we have some correlation in our data, where people are moving around on my blog site. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in an edge weight. And an edge weight is basically the size of the lines that we see in between each of these nodes. So if I grab the views field right here from my field list and drop it underneath the edge weight property, you'll see that it actually resizes the size of the line between each of the nodes. Okay, so edge weight, edge is referring to the lines between each of the nodes, and the edge weight is the size that we've increased it to here. So it's what's basing the size off of the number of views that we've had per page. Now you can also adjust the colors as well. If you wanted to be able to adjust and see the colors be different in each of these, you can change the source node color or the target node color right here by selecting and bringing in the source color. So I can bring in source color underneath the source node color and target color underneath the target node color. And basically what that's gonna do for us is color code each of these and you can see that I've kind of color coded these Using some HTML color codes, you can look at that underneath the data section here and see the HTML color identifier here. And that's being represented here in our visual. So in our sources, we can see that we have either a orange color here, a blue color, and then also the reds are our potential sources. And then the greens are our destinations here. And I've kind of color coded these as red because there's some kind of cross pollination between these two main events that we're gonna look at here in a few moments. What these two main pages are, are my About Me page and my Home page and Archive page, okay? All right, so let's take a look at what else we can do in here. Some other things that we could add in here potentially, you could do things like actually adjusting things like the, the weight of the source co color here or the, the source node. You can kind of adjust by bringing in other metrics. If you had some other measures that you wanted to drop in here, it would be able to adjust the size of the, the weight as well. So if I did something like dropping in the view views measure into the source node weight, you'll see that it kind of resizes those based on that. Not really what I'm looking for, but it does kind of allow you to do that and you can adjust the weight of it. You can also adjust, and this one really won't make sense, but you can also adjust the target node weight, which is the targets, all the green ones right now, by dragging and dropping something like views underneath that. And this can just kind of make it out of control here. So it does give you the ability to resize these though dynamically based on the data. All right, let me pull that out. There we go. This is really what I want to see. So it's interactive. The nice thing about how the network navigator works is you also have the ability to come up to the top here where it says enter text field filter and you can actually start to type in some data. So if I wanted to see something like where are my Power BI posts and how relevant are those in this interaction, I could type Power BI up here, hit enter, and you can see it shows me the most relevant, or really the, the ones that are uh, Power BI related are then enlarged and then I can look at the weight of the line between them or the edge to determine how relevant those posts are and how frequently those posts are looked at. Okay. Now, if you remember from some of the previous examples and previous modules we, we've done, we also did one called Force Directed Graph. And the Force Directed Graph is actually pretty similar to this in how you interact with it. You can certainly do things like select things in here. You can move things around if you wanted to. You can zoom in and zoom out by using your scroll bar on your mouse. So it is pretty interactive. You can also do things like add in data labels if you wanted to. We're going to show you how to add in labels here on the format section here in just a moment. So it works very similar to the force directed map if you uh, worked with that previously, or the force directed graph, I should say. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look now at the format paintbrush section. If we go over to the format paintbrush area here, you can see underneath search, you can change the search bar up here to be uh, really turn on case insensitivity if you wanted to. Right now it is case sensitive. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not case sensitive, excuse me. That means I can type in Power BI uppercase or lowercase and it will work either way by default. Even if I do it lowercase, it still works. So you can see there. But if I change this to be case insensitive, that would mean, or turn, turn that off, that would mean I need to type Power BI exactly how it appears on the screen now. So it's case sensitive now when I turn that off. And now I should be able to uh, only return back the values that are typed exactly the same way they appear in the data. So if I had Power BI capitalized, I better make sure that Power BI is capitalized here. If I have Power BI lowercase, it should not detect it here now because it has case insensitivity, insensitivity turned off. I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. Hit enter one more time. We should see that Power BI works again no matter what the size is, no matter what the sensitivity is. All right, good deal. So that's how the search area works. Now, the rest of this is really covered underneath the layout section. 
the layout section has the rest of it devoted to it, how you want to be able to handle the interaction between the different nodes here. So let's take a look at that. Underneath the layout, you'll see there's things like animate, which is right now is turned on. Basically, the animate is what allows you to kind of see that bouncing interaction that you have here. If you turn off the animation, it makes it a very static chart where you can select things, but it doesn't really have that kind of bounce to it that you saw a few moments ago. So that's what the animate is. I'm going to leave animate on. It's kind of nice. You'll, I will note when you have kind of hundreds or even thousands of nodes in here that that animation kind of gets a little out of control, so you may want to make some adjustments there. Uh, you can also do things like change the maximum number of nodes that are shown. Right now, zero is set to default, meaning it's going to show as many as it can graphically show on this. But you can adjust that if you want to see just something like the top 10, or maybe you want to see the top 5, something like that. You can make some adjustments to this to see a certain number of nodes if you wanted to. Maybe something like 15, and you can kind of get the first 15 visualized in here. You can also do some stuff like this. So maybe you change something like the, uh, the, the link strength. So the strength between these, you can kind of manually adjust, or the, the link distance, the, the distance between each of these links, you can adjust. This one, however, is kind of an interesting one, gravity. Gravity is really, if you think about this, almost like gravity between planets. Gravity is going to, uh, as I increase this, going to bring the nodes closer together. So if I increase this something like 0.5 instead of 0.1, you'll see that the nodes are brought closer together. The gravity of them is forcing them together a little bit more. That's what gravity does. Charge is not too different from that. So charge, you'll see here by default, is in here as a negative 120. You'll note as you increase charge, say for example I make this something like 250, as I increase the charge, it f pushes them farther apart. And really I'm increasing it as a negative number. So then the more negative the number is, the farther apart the values are. If I make this something like a positive value, like 250, not negative, you'll see it really brings them together and they're really pushing together, almost like a, an atom here being forced together. Uh, is the interaction that you see here. So negative 250 or negative 120 is kind of the default interaction, but you can of course adjust that. Now the next thing here is pretty useful. You may want to add labels on here. So if I add labels, I then see labels on each of the values, and you can see this is a little out of control. So this is a good genuine case for maybe wanting to increase the distance between them. So something like maybe negative 250 makes sense now that I'm uh, increasing that even a little bit more so I can see that those data labels a little bit better. So that's what you're going to get with the labels. Now, the, the labels on here are pretty long, so just be aware of that. You may want to do some clipping by writing some DAX. Maybe you write a little bit of DAX to abbreviate the text so it's not kind of pi piling on top of each other here. You can also increase or decrease the text uh, size here. So you can see uh, font size. You can bump that up some if you wanted to. Maybe you want to leave it down so they're not smushing on top of each other. And you can also change the default label color. So maybe I want it to be a more clear black here. So that might be a little clearer to read. Uh, you can also see the ability to change the zoom capability. So if you want to deal with the minimum amount of zoom or maximum amount of zoom, again, you can zoom by scrolling in and out with your cursor or your uh, scroll bar on your mouse. It has some nice interaction there. The rest of this is stuff that you can either control by manually typing things into the format paintbrush area, or you can actually make it data-driven. And we, we did a lot of data-driven capabilities here, so probably not a whole lot that we would change here, but just be aware that you can come in here and make a few more adjustments under things like the max edge color, min edge color, mats edge weight, min edge weight. This all has to do with those settings that we looked at that had fields associated with them. You can also kind of define the min and the max of what those should look like. Okay. All right, now we already adjusted the colors, so no need to adjust the colors here because we had it very data-driven in, in this example, so nothing to change there either. The rest of this is really fields and properties that you would have on every single Power BI visual, so no need to get into too much detail with the title, background, lock aspect, gen general, and border because those exist in every one of the visuals we've talked about, but those just help you kind of adjust some general settings about the visuals you're working with. So that's really it for this one. That's it for the Network Navigator. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to showing you our next one again next time. Thanks a lot.